Hi, this is my first art YouTube video. I'm tentatively calling it Kasu Casts. Hopefully these become a regular weekly thing where I go over my own art process or talk about other things. I have a few motivations for making these videos. First of all, I have many work in progresses that never get completed. They usually remain unfinished, so I don't show them to anyone else. At least this way, I can share some personal projects, even if they don't go anywhere in the end. Second of all, I live by myself in Japan. As a result of the current global situation, there are times where I go months rarely hearing my own voice barring certain unavoidable situations, such as going to the convenience store or the supermarket. For example, a daily conversation with the cashier will be at checkout, where the attending person will ask, Fukuro irimasu ka? Which means, do you need a bag, usually a plastic one? And I'll respond saying, iranai desu. And there goes my social interaction for a day or two, or three, or a week. Anyway, I figured a good first video would be a digital sculpt of a conceptual lion. As of recording this voiceover, I'm still not sure of whether I will make this lion a full figure sculpt or just a head bust. If I think there isn't anything interesting about the current on-screen process, I'll just speed up the video. I started off sculpting a base head form using a normal sphere. I scaled it up, then started using snake hook brush, or snake hook 2, with sculptress pro mode on. At the current stage, I'm marking where the teeth should go, but in hindsight, I should Add the teeth first, then carve the gums around the teeth. The method here that I'm using to add the teeth is using a curved tubes brush. So I'm currently selecting the curved tube brush, which is there. And then to achieve a tapering effect, I go to curve modifiers and in size, I make the left side higher than the right side. And depending on the mileage that you desire, you can get a very sharp effect or a very blunt effect. So there we go. As you can see, putting in the teeth is quite a tedious process. So once I have the front upper teeth put in, I separate masked points or unmasked points to get the... Here I remember that I was getting extremely bored and irritated, also frustrated with the teeth because based on the reference images that I found for lions, uh, they have uh, two fangs on top and two fangs on the bottom or those giant saber tooth or I, I don't know what they're called so and then they have six teeth in between those two teeth two large teeth and I was just oh thinking to myself yeah maybe I should make sure my mouth form is solid before I start putting in these minor details such as the gums and the teeth. So what I'm doing here is I used a curved strap brush to put in the tongue. When using the curved strap brush you can make sure that uh, there's a continuous effect when you use the brush as opposed to a once effect uh, in ZBrush there's a picker option in the in the toolbar or in the palette sub palette I think that's what they call it so in the picker you can pick once or continuous when you use once option where you draw your curve it will just start from that curve 
as your initial point and everything else after that first stroke will be disregarded so this is good if uh, if i want to use an analogy if you've ever painted a fence or a house uh, when you apply your paint roller to the wall there's a dripping effect right so you roll uh, you uh, dip your paint roller in the paint bucket and then you apply it to the wall and at the first point of contact you see dripping coming down so that is exactly what once z option in the picker does if you use continuous option if you draw along a surface the curve will follow the contours of the surface you're drawing on which is quite good because I want this tongue to rest on the bottom of the mouth. And on a side note, when I start doing my initial block out of any sculpt I'm doing, I usually keep everything on Sculptress Pro mode uh, for a few reasons, which I will go into. The first reason why I like to stay in Sculptress Pro mode is there's a soft limit on how many polygons you can go up to. At least for my setting, I think I recall it being around 1.5 million to 2.5 million polygons. So, that being said, if you work this way, you are constrained by the amount of polygons you have to work with whereas if you go into dynamish right away you will become caught up in a sisyphean loop of sculpting in more detail dynameshing losing your sculpted detail to a smoother dynamesh and then you will reconsider thinking to yourself oh, I should sculpt more detail, and then after you sculpt more detail, then you dynamesh again, and wow, you just lost all your detail again. As such, I stay in Sculptress Pro mode until the very end of the initial blockout. Then I transition to dynamesh, and when I approach this dynamesh mode, I make sure that my foundation is very sound because changes that you make in the Sculptures Pro and the Dynamesh modes will define how much changes you have to make later on because the ZBrush workflow is where you have a decent uh, mesh. Maybe it's not very clean, but you can clean it up using Dynamesh, the Zero Mesher. And then you project your mid details from the dynamesh mode to your lower subdivision. Doing so in this way, if your new Z remeshed low poly to high poly subtool has a bad foundation, and or maybe you have some changes you'd like to make in the future, you may run, end up running into a lack of resolution or bad mesh topology which results in bad UVing which results in bad texturing so make sure that your foundation is solid I learned this the hard way many many times all right here we are back to adding teeth so I've already put in the front six teeth on both the upper and lower sections and now I'm going to go into adding the teeth uh, that aren't the front teeth so but that they aren't the molars either oh actually I'm, I'm not sure what a lion molar is actually so I'm adding in the rest of the teeth after I add in each subsequent tooth or pair of teeth I use the clay tubes brush to or clay build up brush to build up the form around the base of the tooth to make sure that the gums adequately cover the the teeth when I'm thinking of my final render 
I'm putting a lot of focus on the face. I'm not too sure if I'm going to do a full body sculpt yet. So, but any regardless of the fact, the face is the point where everyone looks at first if it's a sculpture with the face. So it's very important to spend a decent chunk of time here to make sure that everything makes sense anatomically. anatomically? I don't know. It makes sense in an anatomy perspective from an anatomy. Now you see why I have to make these videos. I'm losing my sense of English. Ego muzukashi. Now more or less the teeth are finished. For now. I think there should be some rear back teeth in the upper jaw, which I haven't done yet, but will eventually do. Anyway, uh, when I finished blocking in most of the teeth, I look back at my reference images and I see that I've made uh, quite a few mistakes in the head shape. Uh, first of all is I realized that the top of the head and the frontalis are too far up. First of all, that's one issue I see right away and I try to fix it. Second of all, I think the pinching around the snout, around the upper snout, should be heavier. So as a result, if you move the bridge of the snout closer together, the eyes must follow as well. And another thing I noticed is that there's a very pronounced nasal labial fold well, assuming, I assume it's the nasal labial fold. I don't know if lions do have nasal labial folds, but I hope they do because then what I'm doing would make more sense. So overall, I think the face is too wide, the eyes are too far apart, and the nose is a little bit too wide. I never knew that creature artists and sculptors had such absolute tedious work to do inserting all these dental implants. Insanity, I tell you. However, in the words of a wise man, we will carry on even though we're broken and defeated. Our memory will carry on. Now I'm making some last minute changes to the head. I still haven't dynameshed yet and I tried mirroring the eye just to see how the composition was but then I usually just keep the eye a single eye there because whenever you make one change to the face and it regards the eye socket you must change the other eyeball as well. So, yeah, I don't want to do that all the time. So here I start adding in the beard or the lower mane of the lion using a curved strap brush. And once that's in, I split mask points and I start using snake hook and clay buildup, clay tubes with Sculptress Pro mode enabled to get the shape I want. When I initially started working on the main, I didn't really understand how I wanted to work on it because the way I learned how to do hair was through using XGen in Maya or generating hair textures in Maya using XGen and then placing them on cards. So sculpting hair is less technical and more artistic and you may think that I'm looking at the mane of real life lions, but I'm actually not like focusing on those aspects that much. I use them for reference just to get the overall shape and I understand that it's kind of like a cone 
If you look for, at a cone from the top to bottom in an orthographic view, you can see that it flares out at the bottom. And if you cut that cone in half, that shape from top to bottom looks like the main. And for reference, I'm looking at some lion manes, but I'm actually looking at a sculpture in Rome, Italy. I have a photograph that I took of uh, Zeus, or I think it's called Fountain of Neptune in, uh, I think it's called Piazza Navona. And that statue has a beard and hair on it. So I'm using, looking at that and trying to replicate it. Continuing to sculpt away. And I do go back to the original head and sculpt some of the sideburns directly on that head. And one of the main inspirations for this sculpt is when I visited Venice, Italy, when you walk around the city, there's quite a lot of lion sculptures or lion motifs. Some are in bronze, some are stone, some I assume are marble. So I also felt really inspired when I saw them. But I'm not sure that I can exactly uh, do a good job on this sculpt because I don't really understand like quadruped anatomy too well. I, I just use what I know about human anatomy and just use that as transfer learning to what I'm doing here. At this point, I'm looking through some reference photos and I saw this photo I took at Ryoan, Ryoan Temple, Ryoanji in Kyoto, and there's like lots of dragons there. So I was thinking, okay, why not use some of those like shape languages in the sculpture? So at the back of the head, uh, probably where I assume like uh, the neck would be or on a human around the seventh cervical vertebra uh, which is like a tendon where the trapezius connects to it's kind of if you look on muscular human body it's a depression there so usually that's where the trapezius and other muscles spawn or insert or attach there so I was thinking, okay, on this lion sculpt neck, I'm going to add in some of those swirling horns or maybe clouds, very suggestive detail. Anyway, I'm still toiling away on this mane and it's starting to kind of come together. I adopted a layering technique if you look at videos of people of hairstylists cutting hair you can see that there's sort of like a stair stepping pattern where the head or where the hair one layer of hair is in front and then another hair is like layer of hair is underneath it kind of so i would th i think of them as like curtains under curtains or curtains behind curtains but the subsequent curtain is a longer or shorter curtain depending on what you desire. Alright, I think I'm almost done with the block out of the main. Going back to the flaring out cone shape, looking from top to down orthographic view that I mentioned before, I'm trying to replicate that shape that I think of in the main. Uh, if you look in the top left corner, there's a white, or there's a black silhouette against a white shadow, or a white background. And I look at this often to see if my sculpt is making sense or not. A uh, silhouette is very important because that's basically what the most primitive organisms see. 
uh, if you think if you know what mollusks are, so maybe like clams or mussels, uh, the way they perceive other organisms is through two colors, black against white or white against black. So the human visual system is building off of that, the retinal ganglion and all of that science stuff. So now I'm showing a little bit of the uh, musculature for the rest of the body. Uh, what I'm thinking in my mind's eye is that I want to pose this but I don't want to make a rig for it. So I, I, I believe I'll be using the Transpose Master in ZBrush, maybe, because I think of this as a concept sculpt. And so that being said, I'm creating these joints that will uh, insert in between the body and the arms, or the torso and the arms. And now I am uh, looking at the torso, sculpting up where the, uh, sculpting out where the latissimus dorsi is, the obliques, the shoulder muscles, the back. But I'm not going into too much detail here, because I'm still undecided on how much of this I'm going to actually be working on, and how much I can just leave to leave in shadow uh the reason why so many people in the movie industry use cinematic lighting uh, one is of course for artistic effect painting with light and another second reason is that oftentimes props aren't so detailed so you kind of want to hide hide them from view and it's totally valid and that's why when i'm sculpting this out i'm already thinking about how my rendering setup is going to be will i illuminate everything using an hdri will i use a one point lighting setup just to show one part of the face and leave the rest of everything else in shadow and or am i going to sculpt everything and sh and may maybe I, I don't know anyway yeah I think that's going to be it for this video not if I continue on to sculpting the rest and rendering then I'll show that 